Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here, tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. I don't even say that's what I do anymore. I just say things. Just look at the description and you'll see my Patreon where I have premium problems. I'm sorry, I do, I'm do. i doing like at least five problems a day and I'm kind of getting sick of it even though, I mean, I like doing them, but like, you know, just doing a lot of them a day is like kind of boring, but um, I also joined the Discord. Okay, here's open the lock. This is a medium problem. A lot of likes. This problem's cool. Um, it's a cool BFS one. Um, let's look at it and see why it is BFS. When I say BFS, I mean breadth first search. But um, here we go. You have a lock in front of you with four circular wheels. So if you guys remember those old-fashioned locks where you have like four digits and you spin the number to open. like uh, Not like a combination lock where you spin it, but like a really old-school one. Like, you know, like with the... The, it looks like a combination lock, but no spinner. And on the bottom, there's those four numbers you spin. And it's like 0 through 9. So each wheel has 10 slots. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The wheels can rotate freely and wrap around. For example, we can turn 9 to 0. So you could spin it either way, or 0 to 9. So you can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the next number would be 0. And you can go backwards too. Each move consists of turning one wheel on one slot. Okay. So if you make z so it starts off as zero 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 zero. This represents the regular state of the four wheels. Uh, you're given a list of dead ends, meaning if the lock displays any of these codes, the wheel will lock and stop turning and you won't be able to open it. Given a target representing the value of wheels that will unlock the lock, return the minimum number of turns required to open the lock or negative one if impossible. So we're given, you know, we're starting out with our lock and it's in the state of 0000, zero, zero, zero. and we're going to give get be given a target like 0202 zero, zero, two. and one move you know the number of move we want to find the minimum number of moves to get to 0202 zero, two, zero, two. and one move means changing one of these digits one by one you can't it's not like increasing it by whatever amount you want it's only one digit by one so we would want to increase the second digit by one so we'd want to go you know this would be the, the starting point. This would be our first move. You know, this would be, you can make a few first moves. You can make that as the first move. Then you'd want to make, um, you know, this maybe the second move. Then you want third move. Then you want the fourth move. So it would be four moves only if, um, if we didn't have dead ends. But we do have dead ends. So look at this. This is a list of dead ends. If we hit any of these, we're screwed. So we cannot uh, just spin it however we want. We got to make sure we're checking the dead ends. We cannot go do 0201. See how I did that? That's not allowed. So we have to figure out a different way to do that. We can't do 0101 either. So couldn't do that either. You could go to 0100 at first. But um, yeah, so it's just something you got to pay attention to. Um, and why do we know, okay, this is, how do we solve this? Uh, this is breadth first search. It's pretty obvious if you've experienced with breadth first, breadth first search. If you're not, uh, I would say like whenever, whenever you have a state, an initial state, especially if you see the word state and then you have a destination. So you want to change something into something else, or if you can think of it as if it's a graph, and it's, you're trying to get, I mean, literally, this is like, breadth first search is used to find the shortest path, uh, you know, and, like, it's, like, similar to this is, um, or, like, just finding a node in a graph, you might search for it using breadth first search. We're trying to find a node, a different state, we're getting from one state to another state, and there's a bunch of possibilities. How do we navigate those possibilities? You can literally think of the possibilities in a graph, and you can navigate them using breadth first search. I mean, it's just kind of when you can when you think about it like that. Just try and think. There's problems that you won't be able to think about like that. So this is one of them you can. And when you can't think about them as in like a graph of possibilities, and you're searching for a destination, then it's probably not breadth first search. Um, so yeah, this is like. Um, Breadth first search. So what it, what does breadth first search usually entail? Well, if you do the tree problems or if you watch all my tree problems, uh, usually you have a queue 
and you have a starting point. You have your starting state and you put it on the queue and you pop it off the queue. You make changes to get closer, one level closer to your ending destination. And then each time you put the changes onto the queue and you keep popping off, changing, and then try and, you know, uh, you just do that until you find your target. So that's exactly what we do here. Um, we're going to keep a hash set of dead ends. So let's just start implementing this. Um, a hash set of strings called this one's dead ends all together. We'll call ours with that underscore is equal to new hash set. And you, we could use this built in method arrays as list um, dead ends. And you could do that, or you could go through and loop through all these and then add them to the hash set, do whatever you want. But that's what I'm doing. So we have this dead ends hash set containing our dead ends. So we can do constant lookups. We're also going to have a hash set of visited nodes. These are going to be visited strings. Um, and the first one we visit is 0, 0, 0, 0. So we'll add that onto there. And now we also need our queue. Breadth first search, almost always using a queue, right? Um, queue strings, we could just call it queue. Whatever you, you can call it posi lock positions or whatever you want. Um, so there we go. Um, and then we'll add to our queue our initial position. So there we go. Now this is the main loop for breadth first search usually. Queue, while the queue is not empty, we pop off the queue, we do something, and then we put more, the next level of results on the queue later. Um, we're going to use the variable level to keep track of you know each level in the breadth first search and how many moves we're making. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get the size of the queue. We will say, okay, size of queue is queue.size. And we'll say while well, size is greater than zero, and we will be doing size minus minus, um, and then on the outer level we'll be doing we'll increase the level each loop. Um, if nothing happens, we're returning negative one. It says that in the description. And the time complexity kind of sucks. See if you can't get to it, it's negative one. So if we break out of this, we're going to be at negative one. Um, the thing that's uh, thing worth noting is the time complexity even though it's kind of bad there's only 10,000 possibilities and computers are pretty fast now so it can handle that pretty quickly um, so nothing to worry about in this specific problem if there's many many digits in this lock it would be something to worry about um, but uh, let's get going here so we want to pop our current string so you use q.pull method and we'll say string the current lock position, you can call whatever you want, we'll call it lock position, is q.pull. So we have our lock position, and we want to modify, we want to do, you know, one every one move away that we could possibly do. Uh, and then put all those on the queue, pop them off, and then each, then we'll do, you know, every possible um, first move we can make, we'll put on the queue, keep popping them off, then every possible second move we can make, and we just have to make sure the whole time that it's not... Um, a dead node if it's if it's in dead ends then we're screwed so we just uh we'll uh skip it and if we break out we're gonna be screwed so if dead ends dot contains lock position that means it's a bad one so we'll just decrement our size and skip the rest of the loop so it'll just keep going and pop more things until the queue's empty and then if they're all dead ends it'll be negative one if it's not a dead end, we can check if it's a if it's equal to the target. So we'll say, okay, is the current node equal to the target? Um, you know, maybe it was zero, zero, zero. We start zero. It was all zeros we started with, and we're trying to get to all zeros. So we popped it. We put it on the queue. We pop it off. We check if it's a target, and we're good. So we can just return level at this point because that's how many moves we took zero. Um, otherwise, it's just going to check it every time. What else do we want to do now? I mean, that's pretty much it. Now we have to make our moves. So let's start making the moves. Uh, to do this, there's going to be two things we do. We're going we're going to need a string builder. So first of all, we're going to say sp is equal to new string builder of lock position. And um, we're going to be looping up to the four digits. And what we're going to do is we're going to increment each digit by one, and we're going to decrement each digit by one, because that's every possible move. We're going to construct those strings 
put them all on the queue if they haven't been visited and they're not dead ends. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, well, just loop now. We'll do uh, less than um, four. Yeah, that's the number of digits. And we will do uh, our string. We'll get. Let's get the current. Let's get the current character. So we'll say current position is equal to sb.char at i, and then we'll construct our strings. So we'll say string one, this will be the incremented positions, will be sb.substring from zero to the current position we're at in the loop, because we're going to do every single one, plus the, well, this one will be, we'll increment this one. So this will be the incremented string, plus, um, What do we do? Current position. If current position is equal to nine, then we're incrementing it to zero. So we'll do zero. This will be a ternary condition. So if it's equal to nine, then the ternary condition will say, then we'll set it to zero. Otherwise, we'll set it to current position minus zero to turn it into an integer, because it's a string right now, or a char, plus one to increment. And then, not even that, we also have to add the rest of the string. So this is the first part. This is the current character. So we increment it in with using a ternary condition. And if it's 9, it has to go to 0 because it scrolls over. And then we have to do the rest of the string. So that's the rest of the string. This is a longer problem, honestly. I thought I was going to get through this a little bit faster. Sorry about that. 0 to i. This one's decremented string. So this will be current position if we're decrementing. Then if it's zero, okay, so if it's zero this time, then we want it to be nine. And if it's not, then we do current position minus zero to, that turns it to an integer, but now we want to do minus one. And then we want to do sb dot sub string i plus one. Okay, now we have both of our strings. These This will loop through every digit, make every possible first move, or every next move, construct the strings of the next move to increment each digit, next move to decrement each digit, and now in the loop, because each time we get the new strings, we have to check, okay, have these been visited? Have the Has this move been visited? If visited doesn't contain, and if it doesn't, if it hasn't been visited, um, and if it's not a dead end, we want to check that. We don't want to put dead ends onto the queue. Then we will do, okay, queue, put it on the queue, we'll evaluate this one later, and we'll also visit it, because we're now, yeah, visited.add s1. That makes sense to me. And we'll do the same with s2. And this puts every possible next move, like I said. Um, I think breadth for search is probably one of the easiest things to really get good at in uh, for technical interviews. Because I feel very confident in my breadth for search skills. Just in case you guys are wondering, I know that you don't care probably. All right, let's see. So I don't know why I'm just rambling. It just takes so long to write. Okay, this is a long problem. Uh, let me know if you guys have a... Um... Dang it, what did I do? Hold on. Size minus minus level plus plus. S2, 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 S2. We're popping off of the queue each time. Yes. We're adding onto the queue for each iteration. We're doing the substrings. We're incrementing the one. We're decrementing the other. They look good to me. We're getting a negative one for some reason. Why? Why are we getting a negative one? Holy crap, I literally just did This is so stupid. I freaking ran into this a second ago. All right, sorry guys. You, for string equality, you can't do lock position. Check if the lock position, if you, can, you can't check the current position of the lock, like the current thing off the queue is equal to target. You have to do if lock position dot equals target. 
I don't know. I, I think I do that because of uh, JavaScript. I do, I'm do. i a JavaScript developer, so. Uh, all right, well, another, way, another video almost error-free, but there you go. That's it. Um, that was a BFS solution. Let me know if you have a better one. I mean, I'm looking at this solution, and it looks pretty complicated as well. So I don't see anything better, but um, time complexity in space sucks. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions about breadth first search. Um, thank you guys for watching, though. And uh, I really appreciate it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.